On August 28, 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. gave his famous I Have a Dream speech on the front steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. In his speech, he said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Dr. King walked to change unfair laws by having marches, protests, sit-ins, and rallies. The law said that African Americans couldn't use the same bus, bathrooms, restaurants, or water fountains as whites. They also could not attend the same schools. This was called segregation. In his right for civil rights, Dr. King got arrested and put into jail many times for breaking these laws. But his work helped to get these unfair laws changed. The civil rights movement made it so black and white children can go to the same school and use the same bathrooms and water fountains. Our country was founded on the idea of liberty and freedom for all. Today we are much closer to that idea. Thanks to Dr. King, now everyone has the same right to sit where they want on the bus and in restaurants. Every citizen has the right to vote and run for political office. There are even laws that prevent employees from not hiring people based on their race. People should be hired based on their ability to do their job. People today can live in racially mixed neighborhoods. It is even illegal for people of different races to marry. I'm glad that things have changed. I like going to school with all types of people. Because of this, I get to know people of different races and backgrounds. Now I can pick my friends based on their character and not what they look like. I think everyone's life is ritual for knowing a wider, a wider variety of people. Today, there are many African Americans in leadership positions, such as our President Barack Obama. There are African Americans who are principals of schools, mayors of cities, governors of states, and leaders in business. Martin Luther King was assassinated on April 4, 1960, 1968. Although he did not live long enough to see his dream come true, I think we would be pleased with the progress made by the civil rights. Movement. Each generation since Martin Luther King has less prejudice than the previous one. This shows how much of his dream has become a reality. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of, the char of their character. Today these words still ring in our ears, and all around us is, there is proof that they have become a reality. Look around. Public places, jobs, and careers, even our laws, are all proof that these words have changed the way we think. Just sit down and listen for five minutes and you'll realize just how much our world has changed because of these famous words. Although you may not realize it, wherever you go you'll find evidence that public places have changed because of these words. Look around your class. It probably seems normal to you. There are people that are African American, Chinese, Taiwanese, Hispanic, Native Americans, etc. All this is proof of Dr. King's dream becoming a reality. Go to a restaurant, use the bathroom, take a drink from a water fountain, now look around, you'll see people of all races mixed together at all three. If you, go to a Mex if you go to a restaurant, maybe you'll see a Hispanic cook and a Mexican waiter. Proof of Dr. King's dream. Go to a bathroom and maybe you'll see a Hispanic man walking out as you're walking in. This never would have been possible in Dr. King's time, but now his famous words have been proven in reality once again. Go to a movie theater or hotel. The clerk at the hotel could be a Caucasian man and his boss could be an African American woman. All of this is once again proof of Dr. King's dream becoming a reality all around us. This is all proof that people are no longer judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. Another point that proves Dr. King's dream is the jobs and careers of people of all races today. Think about the sports that you watch on TV and that you play. Would you find it unusual to see a team of players from many cultures and many races? The answer is no. Because of Dr. King's famous words and many other people throughout history, most people would find it odd to see a team that did not incorporate other races. Look at our president. Even he is proof because first of all, he comes from a biracial family. If you were in the 1960s in Dr. King's time, it may seem as it would be unheard of for an African American to be present in politics, let alone be our president. Take a look at job opportunities. With the right education, a person that is a Caucasian male must be given the same pay as an African American female for the same job. Thanks to a number of things, pay is now based on ability, not race or gender. Finally, go to your city hall and look at the laws. Think about EOE, or Equal Opportunity Employment. It says that no person can be denied a job because of their gender, race, or disability. Dr. Ken's dream is proven even in today's laws. Going out of the next auction, 
when you go to vote, you'll see people of both genders and many races voting alongside you. This could not prove Dr. King's dream better. Finally, think about transportation. Have you ever been on a school bus with kids of other races? Of course you have, because every person has the right to choose their school. You cannot say someone can't come to your school because they're Hispanic. It's against the law. Have you ever been on a train or a bus where you see people of many races sitting in the same area? The answer is yes. Once again, proof of Dr. King's dream. Thank you for giving me five minutes to tell you how and why the world has changed because of Dr. Martin Luther King and how the changes are proven every day. Dr. King serves as one of the greatest examples of a leader in our nation's entire history. Just like Lincoln, King worked to free his fellow man from the forces of oppression. Where Lincoln freed the African-American slaves from literal slavery, King utilized everything in his power to free African-American citizens from the bonds of segregation and discrimination in the hopes that they can one day all enjoy the liberties that are intrinsic to citizenship. Most importantly, as evident in his I Have a Dream speech, and this quote in particular, Dr. King aspired to see an America in which presidents essentially does not exist. He hoped to see people judge other people not solely based on their appearance, but rather on who they truly are and how virtuous they are. When this goal is fully accomplished, all individuals will be characterized fairly and justly and truthfully. I believe that we as a society are on the road to making this dream a reality. Racism is something that will survive no matter what within some members of our society. The hearts and minds of people are often difficult to sway, but as a whole we can grow wiser and more understanding of all different types of people. We at least live in a country which now does not permit its policies to be influenced by biased ideas. By this time we have extirpated all discriminatory and biased laws and policies in our social system. The United States exists as a nation in which all individuals, regardless of any traits that may be inherent to them, share equality in their opportunity to succeed in life as well as in the eyes of the law. Jim Crow is long gone and the Constitution has been amended multiple times to accommodate all Americans as free and equal citizens. No longer do legal barriers exist that may limit the ability of an individual to actively pursue his or her ambitions. Neither is there discrimination against any certain group in our justice system. The citizen's prevailing condition no longer is manipulated by powers greater than his or her own, but is rather a reflection of how motivated he or she is. We can all shape our futures once we first shape ourselves and the content of our character that King referred to. Our destiny is in our own hands. Our nation's creed offers this purest of all freedom blindly to all of its citizens. The very fact that I share a school with people of all different races is enough proof that our country has changed since the days of Dr. King, when segregation was an official ingrained establishment. I share a common public sphere with friendly people from multiple backgrounds. I am proud to have a wide array of amiable friends that belong to various races and religious ideals. To judge someone based on their physical attributes or religious upbringing is not only illogical to me, it is utterly wrong. I decide if an individual is worthy of praise or scorn only on the basis of how good or bad of a person they are. To do this is to be above ignorant discrimination and look reasonably at a situation. We must all learn to group people not by race, ethnicity, or any other possible factor besides how they act. We should not be separated as a human race and we should be happy to belong to a country that has absorbed all different backgrounds. After all, it is best that we are not all the same in our appearance, experiences and beliefs. If we learn to live peacefully with people who may seem different superficially, we can prove that the theory that race, religion, ethnicity and other attributes do not, mean, do not need to be divisive aspects. We can prove together that humans can live together in harmony and to, can discern a moral person from an immoral one based only on the acts they commit. The time is approaching when racism and ignorant discrimination will be barely noticeable and will have no effect. There is very little racism in my environment. The people of my community do their best to live together as one and to respect the differences of others. I don't believe all people should be forced to agree with the lifestyles of others or to abandon any ph racist philosophies they harbor. But all people should indeed tolerate others and never act on hateful ideas. To live and let live is what we must all do. When humans can be at peace with each other, even if we don't agree with or understand each other, we will all be one step closer to a better world. 
The most con important concept to understand, however, is that individuals should not be denounced or judged because of any traits belonging to them, but because of the nature of their choices and actions. Thank you.